Hello students, we started with the chapter the earth in the solar system yesterday. In that we started with the basic description about the space or the night sky. Not necessarily the night sky, we also studied about the sun but what are the things in the space that we see? We started with the stars that the sky looks beautiful after sunset because it is filled with tiny shining objects. These objects are the stars. Some of them are bright and others are dim and certain just simply glow. After that we talked about the moon like we can see the full moon or Purnima and new moon or the Amavasya. On the day of Amavasya the night sky is best. It's completely filled with stars provided that it is a clear night. Then we talked that why can't we see the moon and the stars during the daytime. It is because much brighter light of the sun does not allow us to see the sky, uh, stars and the moon. Then we talked about the celestial bodies. Celestial means things that are in the heaven or belong to the space. In that we studied that these celestial bodies are big, hot and are made up of gases. They have their own heat and light and which they emit in large amounts. These celestial bodies are called stars and the sun is a star. It is the nearest star to the earth. Same as, star, uh, same as sun, there are countless twinkling stars in the sky but we do not feel their heat or light and they look very tiny because they are very very far from us. And from these stars we also studied about constellations. When a group of stars is noticed in a certain pattern it is called a constellation. Ursa Major or Big Bear was one such constellation. And we also studied that a part of Ursa Major is the Saptarishi. We can see the Saptarishi. I also asked you to take help of your elders and try to see the Saptarishi at night. After that we studied about the North Star or the pole star or what we say Dhruv Notaro. We can no locate the north star with the help of the Saptarishi. The uh, star, the pointer star, it points to the north star. In ancient times people used to determine directions at night with the help of the north star. And then at last we studied about planets. The body, the celestial bodies that do not have their own heat and light. But they are lit by the light of the stars. These words are called, uh, these bodies are called planets. And earth is one such planet. And then a satellite of the earth, we, the moon. It is like the companion of earth and moves around it. Like our earth there are seven other planets that get heat and light from the sun and some of them have their moons too. Now we will start with the next part of this chapter. The solar system. The sun, eight planets, satellites, and some other celestial bodies known as asteroids and meteoro meteoroids form the solar system. We often call it a solar family with the sun as its head. Now we will study about the sun, eight planets and 
asteroids and meteoroids. Let's read about it. The Sun Here I have given you the picture of the Sun, the Earth and Moon. We can see the Sun is a huge ball of heat and gas. Let's read some more about it. The Sun is in the center of the solar system. It is huge and made up of extremely hot gases. It provides the pulling force that binds the solar system. The sun is the ultimate source of heat and light for the solar system. But that tremendous heat is not felt so much by us because despite being our nearest star, it is far away from us. The sun is about 150 million kilometers away from the earth. Now, the solar system. Solar means related to the sun. So if the system is related to the sun, the center will be the sun. And as studied earlier, I told you that the sun is huge and it is made up of extremely hot gases. It provides the pulling force that binds the solar system. The planets that move around the sun, they move around it because the sun pulls it towards them. There is a pulling force. It's not that we are always going towards the sun, but it is in the center and all the planets move around it. The sun is the ultimate source of heat and light for the solar system. The main source of heat and light is the sun. But we do not feel that heat because it is far away from us. It is the nearest star to the earth but still it is far away. How far is it? It is 150 million kilometers away from the earth. After the sun, let's study about the planets of the solar system. Here, in this picture, the sun is given and all the planets are given with the number of days it takes to complete a year. A year, as we have, is made up of 365 days. That is, when the earth makes a complete rotation around the sun. Same way it's given about the different planets. You can pause the video and see this for your information. Planets. There are eight planets in our solar system. In order of the distance from the sun, they are Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. All the eight planets of the solar system move around the sun in fixed paths. These paths are elongated. They are called orbits. Mercury is nearest to the sun. It takes only about 88 days to complete one round along its orbit. Venus is considered as Earth's twin because its size and shape are very much similar to that to that of the earth. Now you know there are eight planets in our solar system. In order of the distance from the sun, like the nearest is the first and the farthest is the last. They are Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. You will have to memorize these names and let me give you an easy way to memorize. You can remember it as my very efficient mother just served us nuts. M-V-E-M-J-S-U-S But, sorry, J-S-U-N So, first one Mercury, second Venus, third Earth. 4th Mars, 5th Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. Now 
all the eight planets of the solar system move around the sun in fixed paths. They have their fixed path. These paths are elongated. Elongated means from in the word you will see there is long. So they are lengthened, they are extended and they are called orbits. The fixed path of the planets is called orbits. Mercury is nearest to the sun. It takes only about 88 days to complete one round along its orbit. So when a planet completes one round, we can say that it completed one year. How many days do Earth need to complete that uh, round? It's 365. So that makes one year on Earth. Venus is considered as Earth's twin because its size and shape are very much similar to that of the Earth. There is many more fun facts about the planets but right now we are just studying the basic. When we were in school we were taught that there were nine planets. The ninth planet was Pluto. Let's study why Pluto is no more considered a planet. Till recently, August 2006, Pluto was also considered a planet. However, in a meeting of the International Astronomical Union, a decision was taken that Pluto, like other celestial objects, that is Ceres 2003 UB313, discovered in recent past may be called dwarf planets. Now you know the meaning of dwarf. You have studied the story of Snow White and the seven dwarves. So dwarf means which is small in size or earlier Pluto was considered a little planet like uh, the earth was considered a blue planet. But in a meeting of the International Astronomical Union, it was, a decision was taken that Pluto is like other celestial objects. And so it shall not be considered a part of planet, but it may be called a dwarf planet. When we were in school, in our textbooks, we studied the nine planets and Pluto was one of it. The last one after Neptune. But now, as per recent discoveries, Pluto is considered a dwarf planet and you have to study just the eight planets. The Earth The Earth is the third nearest planet to the Sun. In size, it is the fifth largest planet. It is slightly fat flattened at the poles. That is why its shape is described as geoid. Geoid means an Earth-like shape. Now let's study about our own planet. It is the third nearest planet to the Sun after Mercury and Venus. In its size, it is the fifth largest planet. It is slightly flattened at the poles. We know that the uh, Earth is not a perfect round. It is slightly flattened at the poles and that is why its shape is described as geoid. Geoid means earth-like. Conditions favorable to support life are probably found only on the earth. The earth is neither too hot nor too cold. It has water and air which are very essential for our survival. The earth the air has life-supporting gases like oxygen. Because of these reasons, the Earth is a unique planet in the solar system. From the outer space, the Earth appears blue because its two-thirds surface is covered by water. It is therefore called a blue planet. Now, we may have watched many movies or we know that scientists are trying to reach out to people in universe who are from other planets. But till now, the conditions favorable to support life are found only on the Earth. 
because the earth is neither too hot nor too cold. It has water and air which are very essential for our survival. When the astronomers or the scientists study about different planets, the first thing they try to find is like what are the kinds of gases and is there any source of water there because that shows like is it life supporting then because of the uh, qualities of the earth it is a unique planet in the solar system when we take a picture of the earth it shows like it's blue because it is mostly covered by water and therefore it has got the name of a blue planet the moon our earth has only one satellite that is the moon its diameter is only one quarter that of the earth it appears so big because it is nearer to our planet than other celestial bodies it is about 384400 km away from us now you can compare the distance of the earth from the sun and that from the moon now first word when we think of satellite is the man-made satellite that is moving in space but a satellite is a celestial body that moves around the planets in the same way as the planets move around the sun a human made satellite is an artificial body it is designed by scientists to gather information about the universe or for communication it is carried by a rocket and placed in the orbit around the Earth. Some of the Indian satellites in space are INSAT, IRS, EJUSAT, etc. Now if we study about the moon, we can see that its diameter is only one quarter. One quarter means about 25% of that of the Earth. But still, we feel like the moon is big because it is nearer to earth it is about 384400 kilometers away and the sun was 150 million kilometers away so you can compare the distance from the earth to the sun and that to the moon The moon moves around the earth in about 27 days. It takes exactly the same time to complete one spin. As a result, only one side of the moon is visible to us on the earth. The moon does not have conditions favorable for life. It has mountains, plains and depressions on its surface. These cast shadows on the moon's surface. Look at the full moon and observe these shadows. When we see the moon, we see like we used to think that it has spots on it. But it is not spots. These are the shadows of the mountains. Now how did we know about the moon? The thing is like Neil Armstrong was the first man to step on the surface of the moon. When during the time of 20th July 1969 and do you know who was the first Indian to land on moon he was Rakesh Sharma we have went to moon and we studied about the conditions on the moon the, the conditions on the moon are not favorable for life asteroids Apart from the stars, planets and satellites, there are numerous tiny bodies which also move around the sun. These bodies are called asteroids. They are found between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter. Scientists are of the view that asteroids are parts of planet which exploded many years back. Now, in the solar system, we studied about the stars, planets and satellites. But there are various tiny bodies which move around the sun. They have a fixed path. These bodies are called asteroids. 
and they are found between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter. In the figure you will see that there is a belt of asteroids. Scientists say that these asteroids are parts of planet which exploded many years back. So as a planet is made up of um, land or rock, so these asteroids also look like a huge bulk of rock. Meteoroids The small pieces of rocks which move around the sun are called meteoroids. Sometimes these meteoroids come near the earth and tend to drop upon it. During this process, due to friction with the air, they get heated up and burn. It causes a flash of light. Sometimes a meteor, without being completely burnt, falls on the earth and creates a hollow. Now, asteroid is a huge rock and meteoroids are the small pieces of rock. Asteroids are found between Mars and Jupiter. There is an asteroid belt, but meteoroids they move in the space around the sun. Sometimes these meteoroids come near the earth and tend to drop upon it. Why do they tend to drop? Because when they come near the earth, the earth's gravitational force tends to pull it. But when they enter the atmosphere, the atmosphere protects us from these meteoroids. They are coming with huge speed, uh, sorry, a uh, high speed and that causes a friction with the air. Due to that, these meteoroids get heated up and burn. If it is completely burned, it will vanish and with a flash of light. But sometimes it may not be completely burnt and it falls on the earth. And when something falls <laughs> falls with that great intensity with so much speed and it is a huge it is a piece of rock it creates a hollow hollow it creates a dent or a kind of a pit on the ground do you see a whitish broad band like a white glowing path across the sky on a clear starry night it is a cluster of millions of stars this band is the Milky Way galaxy. Our solar system is a part of this galaxy. In ancient India, it was imagined to be a river of light flowing in the sky. Thus, it was named Akash Ganga. Now, nowadays the sky is not so clear that we can see this. But with the help of a proper telescope, or luckily if you are at a place where there is a clear sky you can find a glowing path a white glowing path it's like milk hence the name Milky Way that is the name of the galaxy our solar system is a part of this galaxy the Indians have named it Akash Ganga why because it seemed like there is a river of light flowing in the sky. A galaxy is a huge system of billions of stars and clouds of dust and gases. There are millions of such galaxies that make the universe. It is difficult to imagine how big the universe is. Scientists are still trying to find out more and more about it. We are not certain about its size, but we know that all of us, you and I, belong to this universe. Well, we studied about, we know something about the earth, which is our habitat. Then we studied about the planets and the solar system. The solar system is part of the galaxy. Which galaxy? The Milky Way. And there are millions of such galaxies in the universe. Each galaxy is a system of billions of stars, clouds, of dust and gases. Now, we still don't know how big the universe is. And we do not know its size. But we all belong to this universe. With this, 
the explanation of the chapter gets over and we'll study the exercises in the next class. But first, let me give you some interesting facts. Jupiter, Saturn and Uranus have rings around them. These are belts of small debris. These rings may be seen from the Earth with the help of powerful telescopes. Debris means small rocks kind of thing. So which are the planets which have rings? Jupiter, Saturn and Uranus. Humans have always been fascinated gazing at the night sky. Those who study the celestial bodies and their movements are called astronomers. Aryabhat was a famous astronomer of ancient India. He said that the moon and the planets shine due to reflected sunlight. Today, astronomers all over the world are busy exploring the universe. Why? Because we still haven't known everything about the universe. Light travels at the speed of about 3 lakh kilometer per second. Yet, even with this speed, the light of the sun takes about 8 minutes to reach the earth. So, it takes about 8 minutes for the sunrise. The speed is 3 lakh kilometer per second. So, we can easily find out how far the sun is from us. That's all with the explanation of the chapter. I still want you to find certain stars or constellations at the night and look at the night sky and try to explore as much as you can about the space. We'll start with the exercises in the next class. But till then you have time to go through the videos again. That's all for today. Bye.